My name is Tori, and I am joined by Richard Thatcher from Movement Mortgage. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Tori. Good morning, everybody. So today's topic is the importance of lender follow-up with realtor buyer leads. So we're going to talk about why it's important for the lender to follow up with the lead. So to start out, Richard, let's just get us introduced to this topic. Um, what information is easier for a lender to obtain for a buyer versus an agent and why? Yeah, so you know, a lot of times, especially if you're a newer agent, your first client is probably gonna be a family or friend. <clears throat> so uh, in that case, a lot of times, you know, maybe there's a bankruptcy or a foreclosure that, uh, you know, a friend or, or a neighbor or a family member really isn't comfortable sharing with, with the realtor. Uh, and even beyond that, it, for someone you just meet, you know, they really want the house. So they're afraid that if they tell you too much that maybe they can't get the property or you won't consider them. So having a good lender uh, partner is kind of a, a good buffer zone. It, you know, to get information from them that they may not be comfortable telling the the agent, maybe out of fear or because, like I said, it's a neighbor, it's a family member. So it kind of lets us do all the dirty work, get all the questions, get uh, all that information out of the way so that the, you know, the realtor can do what they're supposed to do, go find houses, go sell houses. Um, it just kind of makes it easier because we're not the salesperson. We're not there to sell them the home or help them buy the home. We're just there to see if we can get them enough money to do so. Perfect. So it kind of takes a little pressure off the real too, so they don't have to. Yeah, as well as the client. Like I said, it's, you know, someone who's had a bankruptcy in the past, that's not a comfortable conversation to have when someone asks you, hey, have you ever had a bankruptcy or or how much money do you make? You know, if, if that person is your next door neighbor, you may not want them to know your, you know, your finances. Very true. Um, so should the realtor wait until the lender says the client is approved to start their own follow-up? No, I mean, I think it's important to always follow up. Um, sometimes uh, I've had realtors kind of get really, really involved to where, you know, between me and the realtor, we've overwhelmed the client. Um, no, absolutely. Always do your follow-up. The lender is going to do their follow-up too, until you get them secured, get them financed. You know, it is a team effort. So ideally what you want is the realtor and the lender to be working together to both be following up with, with the client until the transaction is closed and you move on to the next one. Perfect. Um, how important is it to keep the real so email yeah super important because kind of what happens in the shuffle depending on you know not every transaction is perfect where they say hey Richard here's a person who wants to buy this house I call them at 12 they have all their documents to me by 2 and an offer on a house by 4 it doesn't always go like that. Sometimes it takes weeks, months to get them qualified. So as a lender, the last thing you want, because you're, you know, you're getting all their documentation, you're pulling their credit, you you have to talk to them because you've got to get them pre-qualified. Whereas the realtor may just be kind of doing their follow-up, waiting until they're approved, till they get all their stuff together, or sometimes waiting for money to come through for tax returns. So the last thing we want is the uh, realtor to kind of get get forgotten about because what happens is, it may take three months to get someone approved, but every time I'm I'm uh, talking to the client or there's anything going back and forth, I always want to keep that realtor on the top of the mind of the client because I, you know, realistically, I probably met the client through the realtor, so we don't ever want to forget about the realtor. So it's very important for a lender, even on text messages. If I if if I get someone who prefers to communicate through text message, I just create a conversation with the realtor and the buyer. And every time the buyer and I have a communication uh, via text, uh, the realtor knows about it. And it also helps them too, because if they can see that we're getting close, maybe it's time to start sending them properties. Mm -hmm. um, another thing too, you know, maybe this, maybe we met this person at an open house. So that's really the only time they've ever met them face to face. And, and again, we, we don't want them to walk into an open another open house thinking, well, Richard got me approved. So I like this property. I'll just talk to this realtor. You know, we, we can't have that happen. We got to make sure that the realtor that initially uh, met with them, met with us uh, is on all the trans on all the uh, communications so that they can see where it's going and that the you know, the buyer never forgets about that, that uh, that real estate agent. Perfect. And just because you didn't think of the houses, uh, having a lender, lender. open house to talk to the prospective buyers. 
Yeah, you know, I, I do a lot of open houses. And one thing I do notice is someone walking into an open house is is more apt to talk to me. Uh, and I think mainly because I, I can't sell them that home. I, I'm not a licensed realtor. I can't write a contract up. So uh, the small talk kind of is easier when I'm talking to them because, you know, I, I immediately let them know, hey, I, I work for Movement Mortgage. I'm a lender. I'm not a realtor. Um, and so they open up a little bit more. It's, you know, when you walk onto a car lot, I think a lot of people will talk to the finance guy before they talk to the car salesman. Because again, I, I can't sell them a home. I can't list their home. I can't do anything with a home. I can get them financed to do so. So it's important to have a lender because it, it's kind of the, you know, non-interested third party, if you will. They're going to talk to me. You know, they may not talk to either one of us, but they're probably going to be a little more comfortable speaking with me because I'm not going to try to get them to sign any documents to list their property or to take them on a, uh, you know, buyer's agreement. So yeah, it's really important. And, and especially if you're as a lender, you know, when you're at an open house, you're there to work. Um, your job is to support the realtor. You should be talking to everybody just as much as the realtor is. Um, obviously you can't answer a lot of the questions, but that's when you direct it toward, towards your realtor partner that you're there with. So very important, uh, a lender. What's that? Kind of like the casual buffer, the small talk guy. It's a, it's amazing. I did one last weekend and this couple walked in and the agent did the right thing, tried to greet them, tried to talk to them. And they were like, Oh, we, we have somebody we're working with, uh, you know, and they just kind of shoot them off. Well, I followed them upstairs, started talking to them. Do you live in the neighborhood? Found out that they did live in the neighborhood, that they rented, um, that they had a foreclosure uh, five years ago. And so you know, for a couple of things that may be embarrassed about the foreclosure, didn't want to tell the agent that, but they were, they were willing to talk to me. And it turns out they weren't working with anybody. They had found the property on Zillow or realtor.com, one of the two, and just walked in. Now, I don't know. I know that the uh, realtor did get their email address and phone number. I don't know what has happened so far. I haven't, um, I haven't got any information from them. I've sent them a couple emails myself, but had I not been there, those people would have just walked in, brushed off the agent and walked out. But, you know, now that could turn into a deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we're going to do a little bit of an echo. Do you want to turn down the volume a little bit? I think I'm echoing. I just got to. Sure. We'll see if it works. All right. Um, Thanks for letting us know about the echo. Hopefully that gets fixed. But um, don't forget to ask any questions. To any questions, just post them in here, and we'll go over them at the end if you have any. Um, Richard's contact information is also in here, so you can always ask any questions after. But um, let's go ahead and wrap it up, Richard. What are the what would be the lender's biggest role in regards to new buyer leads? Yeah, so I mean, there's a couple of things. Definitely the follow up aspect of it. You, you know, when you're working with a realtor, you, you're you're on that realtor's team. So um, definitely follow up. And then, like you said, kind of like a casual buffer. There, there are just some things that that buyers are you know, uncomfortable telling me. And they certainly don't want to tell a real estate agent about a foreclosure or a divorce, maybe child support. There's just certain things that they know they can tell me that, you know, legally, I can't tell anybody. And again, if it's your neighbor or family member, that's that's tough, too, because they don't want to you know, they don't want to tell you that they just got divorced or that their husband's moving out and they need to sell the house or they had a bankruptcy three years ago. That, that stuff's embarrassing for a lot of people. And to tell your friend or your neighbor or someone that goes to, you know, your kids go to school together, you think, oh, geez, now everybody at my kid's school is going to know that uh, I had a bankruptcy three years ago. So I, I think it's just, like you said, a casual buffer, someone that they can uh, open up to a little bit more. And, you know, someone who, you know, for me, it doesn't matter. You know, if if you can do the loan, if we can do the loan, we can do the loan. And then the realtor finds the house. So it's just someone that they're probably a little bit more comfortable with and will maybe tell things that they wouldn't tell a realtor, you know, sometimes just out of fear that, oh, well, I, I won't get the house if, if I have a bankruptcy, not knowing that that's not true. So. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for sharing all of your information. It's always a pleasure to have you on our broadcast. And it doesn't look like we have any questions coming through right now, but like I had said, um, Richard's contact information is in the description of this video. Feel free to call him, email him anytime. I'm sure he'd love to hear from every single one of you. Come on, uh, Joey, you don't have a question? <laughs> Not yet. He did say great info. Okay, all right. Um, once again, thank you so much, Richard, for joining us. And um, 
we will have you back definitely yeah thank uh, you guys so much um yeah and again I, i'm available to anybody um i know that uh, i'm in california so there may be some state differences as far as guidelines but i could definitely find the answer for you movement is a nationwide company um, I could definitely get someone in contact with you that could answer any questions. But uh, yeah, just remember that, you know, as part of the uh, Allison James team, I, I am part of your guys' team. So whether I'm working on the deal with you or not, if you just have a question, you're in transaction uh, with another lender, things don't make sense, or you're not getting answers that you think, you know, call me, email, text me. Uh, again, I'm, I'm part of the team. So I'm here as a resource to you guys. Don't hesitate. You know, like I said, don't feel bad that I'm not part of the transaction. Uh, I'm just here to help you guys. Yeah, and we love having Richard a part of the team. Definitely take advantage of um, his knowledge that he has because he definitely has a lot to share. So um, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you for joining us. And once again, thank you, Richard, for being with us today. Thanks, Tori. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.